Welcome to another UFC Predictions video as we have UFC 304 taking place on Saturday, July 27th. Just going to give my predictions for the main card. And remember, as always, that the card is subject to change. Now, I'm recording this video really late on uh, July 18th, Thursday night, almost Friday morning, actually. So something may change before then. But before I give you my predictions, just a few things. If you're a fan of the UFC and you like reaction videos as well as prediction videos and you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please make sure that you hammer fist that like button, share this video with a friend, put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comments section about what your thoughts are on my predictions for UFC 304. What ones do you think I got right? What ones do you think I got wrong? What are your predictions and any other fight predictions that you have or fights that you want to see? Uh, remember, I react to every fight that's on the main card, so come back to the channel about an hour to an hour and a half after the main card's over with, I'll post my first reaction. It'll probably be the main event or the co-main event. Whatever one is uh, more entertaining, I guess. Now, there's a chance I might get a copyright strike, which doesn't happen often. But if I do, then I'm going to have to pivot to the other one. If both of them get copyright strikes, well, then I'll have to just go with one that doesn't. Unless, of course, I get one on every fight, which doesn't happen often. It's usually not a problem. But every once in a while, like once or twice a year... I get that. So come back to the channel. I'll put my 2023 uh, fight reaction highlight video right there with about 20 seconds left to go in the video. And I'll put other reactions to fights that happened this year that were really exciting right there, there, and there. So check those out. And of course, last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support and be a part of something special. And you never know what you're going to see on JDF TV. Something I also want to mention before my predictions I don't necessarily like when you have a card in a different country like Manchester for this one and you stack the card with a bunch of Europeans. That's nice and that's great for the European crowd, but what if some of those fights get canceled? What that does is that puts that fighter potentially on the sideline and then they don't want to fight again until the next Manchester or you know, England card. I feel like they should build the card around one or two guys from that place and then just put who's available on the card. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Uh, obviously, I think a lot of people like it when their hometown guys fight, but I feel like that might mess up a card if fighters are holding out to fight in their own place. So just my thoughts on that. But anyway, here are my predictions for the main card. Sorry for my minor little rant there. Starting in the featherweight division, we have Giga Chikatse versus Arnold Allen. Giga is really good. And he's got some good power at times, but I don't think he's really been tested. He's fighting guys that are more gatekeepers in the featherweight division, where Arnold Allen, while he's lost to guys that are really good in the featherweight division, Max Holloway and uh, Ilovev, it's just better competition, in my opinion. And I think Arnold Allen is going to get the job done. Now, how that is, I'm not exactly sure. I know he's at a disadvantage when it comes to height. And reach, but I think he's going to get the job done. Simple, but Arnold Allen's going to win this fight. But Giga is good, and he obviously could pull up and up, pull off an upset here. Next up in the UFC flyweight division, we have Manel Kopp versus Muhammad Mukayev. Mukayev is really good, undefeated, 12 and 0. And then Manel Kopp, he's 19 and 6 for his MMA career. He's really good. He's got some really good striking. Obviously, Mukayev wrestling, grappling, submissions. This is going to be a tough fight for Manel Kopp to win. I think he certainly has a chance to win this fight because he can do something unorthodox and catch and tag Mukhayev. But ultimately, I am going to go with uh, Muhammad Mukhayev to win this fight uh, and potentially get the next shot at Pantoja. Uh, I think that might happen. Uh, I would prefer if Manel Kopp fought Kai Carroll France just because they had that that thing at the press conference back a while ago. I would have preferred that fight, but this is a fun fight. I'm really looking forward to it, too, but I'm going to have to go with Muhammad Mukhayev to win the fight. Next up in the light, hey, lightweight division, we have Bobby King Green versus Patty the Batty Pimblet in a fight where Bobby Green is actually the favorite, which kind of surprises me. He's a journeyman fighter. He'll win a couple. He'll lose a couple. He'll win a couple. He'll lose a couple. And then Patty the Batty, I think people since the... Uh, Jared Gordon fight, which he hasn't had very many fights since then, just the Tony Ferguson fight. People are really sour on Patty the Batty Pimblet. I'm actually going to go with Patty the Batty to win this fight. I think he's going to get Bobby Green on the ground and submit him somehow. Obviously, the fight could go either way. It's a really close 
fight right now in terms of the betting odds, but I just think Bobby Green is not the most technical fighter. Yeah, he's really good at times. He beat Jim Miller up pretty bad at UFC 300, but he also has those fights where he doesn't look good, and I think this is going to be one of the fights. And Patty the Batty, I think, has like a chip on his shoulder for the fans, not his local fans, but a lot of fans have turned their back on Patty the Batty Pimblet. So I'm going to pick Patty the Batty to win the fight. Next up in the co-main event of the evening for the interim heavyweight championship, we have Curtis Blaze versus Tom Aspinall. Two, of course, they fought before. Fight didn't last long. Curtis Blades didn't necessarily hurt Tom Aspinall, but Tom Aspinall got hurt and the fight had to be stopped. And it's a win for Curtis Blades, which I don't agree with that. I think fights where there's really not a clear winner, they should just be no contests immediately. But obviously for this fight, Tom Aspinall is the favorite. Uh, I am going to pick Tom Aspinall to win this fight. I think he's really skilled and really talented. However, I do think there's a chance and there's a world where Curtis Blades can win this fight. You counted him out against Gilton Almeida, especially after that first round, and he came back and hammer-fisted Gilton Almeida to win the fight. Tom Aspinall, I think, is a fighter that a lot of people overrate. I'm not saying Tom Aspinall isn't good. He's really good right now, based on what I've seen thus far. But he also hasn't been in the octagon very well, or very well, very long. Uh, if Blades can weather the storm of Tom Aspinall and make the fight go longer, I want to see what Tom Aspinall can do in a longer fight. Now, will it last long? Who knows, but I feel like people are saying like Tom Aspinall is the new GOAT in mixed martial arts. Like He would have no problem in steamroll, steamroll through John Jones. And I just don't believe that. I don't think Tom Aspinall is that good. However, he's looked really good in the fights that he's had thus far. But he's fought some guys that aren't necessarily guys with high fight IQs. Uh, I think Blades does have a better IQ, but maybe not because he got beat by Sergei Pavlovich, who's, who's really good. But Sergei Pavlovich's fight IQ I don't think is very high. I want to see Tom Aspinall fight. Uh, maybe even a Servo Gan or a Gilton Almeida. Uh, to see how he does against those guys. But I'm going to pick Tom Aspinall to win the fight and retain the uh, interim heavyweight championship. And then in the main event of the evening for the UFC welterweight championship, we have the challenger, Lau Muhammad, versus the champion, Leon Rocky Edwards, in their second fight. Now, obviously, we have to go back to that first fight, which was scored in no contest. But in that fight, Leon Edwards was really piecing up Lau Muhammad. Uh, you know, outstriking him a lot, but unfortunately for Bilal Muhammad, he got an eye poke, and it was a bad one, <coughs> excuse me, where he couldn't continue the fight, but he didn't look very good in that fight. He was on his way to losing. Of course, it was a five-round fight, if memory serves me correctly, and you never know what can happen. That was, I believe, just the first round, so it could have easily changed, but uh, Muhammad didn't look very good. So he is now fighting in Leon Edwards' hometown, I think it's his hometown. He's fighting in his home country, at least. Uh, England, Manchester, to be specific. He needs to be super aggressive in this fight. He can't just pull out a decision win here, or it's got to be very, very, very dominant uh, if for him to win by decision. Because we know that Muhammad likes to win by decision. Lots of decisions on his, uh, his resume. Aside from the Sean Brady fight and one other fight, I think. Uh, maybe it's two other fights, one of which wasn't in the UFC. I don't know for sure. I looked at it, but now I've already forgot what it is because it's not that most. It's not very impressive to look at all these unanimous decision victories. So uh, he's got to be super aggressive to win this fight. Leon Edwards, he's got a slight reach advantage, not a super big one, but a slight one, and he's obviously got the height advantage. I feel like he's going to outpoint Lau Muhammad. Um, you just got to keep him on his back foot, pressure him. He seems to have good takedown defense. But the one thing that I see Leon Edwards do a lot is he cheats. He grabs the fence a lot. So if whoever's refereeing this fight should really, like if they see it once, I'd kick him in the hand. And if he does it again, I would take a point away. No questions asked. No more warnings. In fact, you know what? He's done it before. He's been warned before. I would take a point away right away. That might be a little harsh, but I don't want to see him cheat to retain his title and to not get taken down. But he's proved to have pretty good takedown defense, uh, or at least way better to takedown defense. You know, he the the second fight against Kamaru Usman, and then of course the fight against Colby Covington, which was not very entertaining at all. And I wasn't very impressed with Leon Edwards in that fight. Colby Covington looked didn't look good either. So who knows what's going to happen? But I am going to pick Leon Edwards to win this fight. Hopefully in awesome fashion. Hopefully he can head kick. Bilal Muhammad into the shadow realm 
and maybe Bilal will never come back and go to like PFL or something like that because not many people like Bilal Muhammad. I don't mind him. You know, he he fights when he needs to fight. He took a fight on a really short notice against Gilbert Burns. Won that fight, although Gilbert Burns had, what, one arm? Anyway, those are my predictions for this fight card. I didn't really give really good analysis, or I didn't go in depth because I'm tired. It's later at night than I would normally record this type of video. Usually this video would be recorded by 7 p.m. on the day that I record it, and this is now 12.17 uh, that I'm uh, still, well, I was at a movie and all that, so... Let me know what your thoughts are. If you're a fan of the UFC and you like reaction videos and prediction videos, hammer fist that like button, share the video with a friend, put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your predictions. Let me know what uh, future fights you want to see and future predictions that you have. Remember to see my 2023 highlight reel, video, highlight, reel, highlight reel video right there and some good fight videos there, 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 and there. And then last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. You're watching the video anyway. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support. And be a part of something special. And you never know what you're going to see on JDM TV.